Good afternoon. Welcome to our worship on Wednesday here at the St. Mary Church. Yeah, this is me, Pastor Jones. I know I look a little different, uh, but the Lord has truly been good to us. He's truly been kind to us. And I'm just a, 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 a experiencing the blessings of the Lord because I'm here today and I'm here talking to you uh, right where you are virtually. And I thank God for the means that he's given us to stay connected, amen, and to study his word. We're here on another Wednesday evening, and uh, and I'm glad about it. I know we went through Sunday, and, and prayerfully, and hopefully you enjoyed all the word that you've heard. But on tonight, it's just another night for refueling and refreshing uh, from Sunday. And on tonight, we have another great lesson. Uh, we want to uh, say hello to our uh, beautiful uh, Sunday school teacher, Sister Cordella Dorsey. Y'all come on, give it up for her. Amen. We thank God for her. How are you doing tonight? I am blessed and highly favored. Awesome. So glad to be back in the house of the Lord to study God's word. God's word is awesome. Even during the time when we weren't together, God's word kept us That's right. going. And we, we have we need his word yes. every day of our lives. Every day, every day. And so we're so grateful to have her. A shout out uh, to our Sunday school department here at the St. Mary Church. We normally uh, do Sunday school on Wednesday night since the pandemic. And we want to shout out to our Sunday school superintendent, uh, Deacon Audrey Petty, to uh, Brother Ron Cooper, our secretary, and to our first lady, our other teacher, Amen. Uh, First Lady Jones. We thank God for all of you. And to all of our students and those that are going to be watching the service, that are watching now and that are going to watch later, we want to say hello and we thank God for you. Uh, we have a great lesson on tonight. I want us to just dig right off into the word. What is the title of tonight's lesson? An awesome title, Overcoming Self-Interest. Wow. Overcoming, Overcoming self Interest. interest. That's good. That's and good. our passage is Luke, the sixth chapter, verses 27 through 36. All right. All and right. our key verse is, But I say unto you which hear, love your enemies, mm. do good to them which hate you, mm -hmm. bless them that curse you, and pray for them which despitefully use you. Mm. Luke, the sixth chapter, verses 27 and 8. Wow. We've heard that all of our lives. Really? And, you know, it's still something that's hard to grasp. You know, I've said over and over, I think the hardest thing that I had to go through when I accepted Christ was to love my enemies. Mm -hmm. To love those that was misusing me. Yes. But the more that you grow in Christ, mm -hmm. the easier to come. Yes. Because he strengthened you to the point where it doesn't bother you anymore because we have overcome. That's right. That's right. And I think that growing in Christ is the most important aspect. When you allow him to control you that's right. and lead you uh, because a lot of this we can't do uh, through ourselves, but we have to do it through the help of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 And that's very important. So our introduction it goes like this. You likely have heard this phrase. Act like you have some home training. <laughs> I think we've all heard that. <laughs> Amen. Most know exactly what, it, what that means. It's the warning we got from our guardians. who, Whenever we ventured from home, especially when we were out of their sight, our parents issued the, that warning to us out of love, uh, but also to make sure that we didn't embarrass them or the household. This phrase and others like it are a way for parents to be present even when they cannot be seen by their children. And, that, and that's exactly right. I remember going to a friend's house or my cousin's house or, or uh, anybody in my family's house. They would always tell me, act like you got some home friends. And you had to act like that because if you didn't, you you pay for it. Act like you know where you came from, you know, or or, or act like 
know something, you know. Yeah. You know, they would tell you stuff like that. Uh, it is a reminder that rings in the heads of children, especially when they are about to engage in behavior that would not be befitting of proper character. Listen at that. Beloved of God, there is nowhere we could ever venture on the face of the earth where we'd be out of the watchful gaze of our God. Guess what? God has some important house rules for us. Amen. And on tonight in our lesson, Jesus, our elder brother, lays down the rules of God's kingdom to help us know how we ought to behave when we find ourselves in unfamiliar and uncomfortable scenarios. Amen. Isn't that something? Is our first outline says kingdom requirements. Kingdom requirements. Kingdom requirements. It didn't say earthly requirement. Mm -hmm. It said kingdom. Yeah. So that means heavenly requirements. That's right. And it starts out said, but I say unto you which hear, love your enemies, do good to them which hate you, mm -hmm. bless them that curse you. And pray for them which despitefully use you. Mm -hmm. And unto him that smited thee on one cheek, offer the other. And him that layeth away the cloak, forbid not to take thy coat also. Give to every man that asketh of thee. And of him that taketh away thy goods, ask them not again. And, ye would, and as ye would that men should do to you, do ye also to them likewise. Mm, wow. Now this is what, this is kingdom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Requirement. Not man requirement. That's right. This is God's requirement. Just some ground rules that God has, has, has prepared for us in order for us to live for him. You know, there ought to be a difference. It's true. And, and when we live for him, then uh, not living for him. There ought to be a difference between the saved and the unsaved. There ought to be a difference if we claim to be his children and he's our father and to those that just live a sinner's life. We, it ought to be a difference. And there is a difference. When you've been born again, there is a difference. Yeah. You have a different walk. All right. You have a different talk. Yes. You have a different look, outlook on life. Mm -hmm. And it's talking about even the enemies. Yeah. We know every one of us. Jesus had them. That's right. So what makes you think you're going to be without them? <laughs> so Jesus set the greatest example of how to deal with your enemies. That's right. He said, he's put it to us. He said, love your enemies. Mm. Good to them. Oh my goodness. Kill my dog, I kill your cat. <laughs> That's the attitude that we have. Yeah, we have a tick for time. Yes, we do. They do this to us, we're going to do something bad. You know, if they say something to us, we're going to say something to them. Uh, we, we have to be able, uh, if you got the love of your heart, you have to, be able to love your enemies and then. Cause see, wait a minute. <laughs> Let's back up. See, you can love folk from afar. <laughs> you can love folk that live across the world. But not only did he say love them, but do good. But then you got to do good. And that mean, do good means what? That's action. That's action. That means doing something. Yeah. That's personal. Ooh. That's personal. How many of us struggle with not not just loving folk, but doing good? To everybody. See, we can love and do good to the folk that are in our circles, that are in our families, it may be in our households. But what about that person that has rubbed you the wrong way? What about that person that has talked about you? What about that person that has lied on you and scandalized your name? Can you love and do good to them? And it takes it takes a lot of God. Mm. It takes it takes the Holy Ghost. That's the reason it's important. And I say this all the time. It's very important that you receive the Holy Ghost. When Jesus left, he left his disciples in the upper room, and he told them to stay there and tarry until they did what? Until they received, received. 
yeah. the Holy Ghost. Yes. We have to receive the Holy Ghost. And you just can't receive it like you do a gift. Mm -mm. I go out to the you can't go to the store and buy it. No. You got to seek it. Uh-uh. Ask God for it. That's right. And then you got to tarry That's and right. wait on it. Wait and on let it. him fill you. Yes. You can't fill yourself with it. Uh-uh. He have to fill hallelujah. He yes. have to fill you with the Holy Spirit. That's right. That's right. And when you're filled with the Holy Spirit, you that will make you yeah. do good That's right. to them that hate you. That's right. It's something on the inside yes. that worketh on the outside My God. that you'll be able to see. So you don't have to go around and tell people who you are. Uh -huh. I don't have to go and tell you that I'm a child of the king. That's right. My actions speak for itself. Come on now. Come on. That's Come right. on. Your action. That's a very important to know. Mm -hmm. Your love is an action word. Yes, yes. That's right. Love is an action word. When you love, you do. That's right. That's right. And then, you know, uh, not only does he tell us to love and do good to them, but then he tells us if we're going to love God in us, if we're going to live for him, then he says, bless them bless. that curse you. That's right. And pray for them that despitefully, um, that's another twofold in one sentence. He said, bless, bless first and, pray. and then pray. So, you know, a lot of times folk do us wrong. We ain't got nothing good to say about them. Matter of fact, we saying all kind of things we can say mm -hmm. about them. That ain't, amen, in a positive light. And then we ain't turning around trying to pray for nobody. No. Oh, I can't, I, I, I can't pray right now. I'm too mad. No, that's the time when you ought to pray. Lord, forgive me for the thoughts that I have and forgive that person for they know not what they do. The amen to that. <laughs> amen. And see, this is when you learn, when you know that you're in the God's realm. Yeah. When you are obeying God's rule. But God has rules for his saints. That's right. There are things that we ought to do and there are things that we should not do. That's right. And that, Jesus Christ himself. Yeah. He set the greatest example. Yeah. While he walked the streets of earth. All right. He's everything didn't go pleasing. They talked about him. They yes, spit on him. They did all kind of things to him. He never retaliated. That's right. So if Jesus did it and we're supposed to be Christian, which means Christ like, yeah. then why are we so mad and they retaliate? Come on. It's getting back. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give them a piece of your mind. You better keep all the mind you got because you're going to need it. <laughs> Don't give away your mind now because you're going to need it yourself in I order to. That's right. Fight off the evil of this world. Yes, yes. Fight off the evil and pray. Pray. You know, when you pray for your enemy, you don't pray for them to be hurtful. No. You don't no. pray because God not going to hear that kind of prayer. You don't pray that you kind of prayer, pray, no one. You don't pray and ask for some harm to come up on your enemy. Mm -hmm. You pray that their eyes will be open. Yes. That they will be able to see the light. Yeah. Change their ways. That's right. You pray for a change in them. Yes. That's what you pray for. You don't pray for evilness to come up on Lord, get him for me. Mm. Knock him off his horse and knock him down and mm -hmm. make him on his bed mm -hmm. of sickness. You don't do that. No. You pray that God will bless them, that they will be able to see the light because God is able. You know, if we follow the example of Jesus, Jesus was crucified by man, and he came to die for man. And but he was crucified by man, and when he prayed, he didn't say, Lord, wipe these folks out. Forgive us. He didn't say, Lord, I need you to kill them all dead. He didn't say, Lord, they done did me wrong. I need you to do something to them. But he said, watch this, forgive them. Damn. Oh, my God. And guess what? We've been forgiven ever since then. That's right. You, me, everybody. We all have been forgiven. He forgives us every day. He forgives us every morning. He forgives us every time we mess up. He's still forgiven. Isn't that wonderful to know that he is such a forgiving God? Because I know in my lifetime he has forgiven me. But he said something that the, he said, for they know not. Ooh, yes. 
because they know not yeah. what they do. What they do. And you know that for they know not what they do is very important. That's right. Because a lot of things that I did in my lifetime mm -hmm. is because I did not know. That's right. That's we right. do things that we don't know, but when you learn better, you do better. That's it. That's it. And you learn by what getting into the word of the Lord. That's right. And not just read it. Ask God for an understanding of what you're reading. Yeah. Ask him to put the words into your heart. Let it become a life to you. Let it become food to you. Let it become something that you can live on. That's right. Let it become something that can flourish and enlighten your life, enhance your life. Uh -huh. This is what we need. That's what we need. We need that. When, and it says, and unto him that smiteth thee on one cheek. Now, it doesn't, I don't, so many people get this wrong. Mm-hmm. They think that this, it means just literally coming up, slapping you. Mm -hmm. But you know what? A lot of times you don't have to hit nobody, but you get slapped in the face with words. That's right. That's right. That's right. Words can hurt. That's it right. It feels like it, some words can almost knock you to your knees. That's right. But it also, he said, turn up. In other words, don't get up fighting. Mm -hmm. Don't get up fighting. <laughs> mm -hmm. Turn the other cheek. In mm. other words, do good. Do good. Do good. Yeah. Don't get up trying to retaliate. Too many of us are, I'm going to lay my religion down. You better not. You may not be able to pick it back up. That's right. You know, I was telling, I was talking to some uh, preacher friends of mine just the other day, and I was telling them that a lot of times we take stuff personal, uh, like it's against us, but it's really not. It's the enemy that is trying to stop us from kingdom work. And, and that goes for everybody. It's always, watch this, the enemy, the spirit that's within them that's trying to uh, 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 cut you down and trying to uh, distort your character, trying to uh, kill who you are, trying to, amen, paint a different picture than who you really are. It's the enemy that's trying to do that. And the enemy knows every time, not sometimes, but every time God get ready to elevate you in his time, the enemy always going to try to prevent it from happening. Right. Because the enemy knows what God is doing. He strengthens you. But you got to be able to what? Overcome. You got to overcome it. You, you got to overcome, overcome it. it. That's and right. you don't have the power to do it yourself. That's right. We don't have the power yeah. to overcome it. That's right. That's the reason we, it's, it's very important. I mm -hmm. can't stress this enough. It's very important that you have the Holy Ghost. Yes. Because that's the only way we can have come, overcome the wise of the devil. That's right. Because he got a lot of tricks out there. Uh -huh. a lot, I call him the slimy snail. Yeah. Yeah. He's slimy. He's sneaky. He's just like a snake. Uh -huh. So snake in the grass. You may not see the grass, the snake in the grass. But you'll feel it when he bites you. <laughs> That's the same way That's it is it. With, with the devil. That's it. That's you it. You can feel him when he hits you. Yeah. And one thing I love about the Holy Ghost, because when Satan stuck his head up there, God let you know that you know who that is. That's your enemy. Uh -huh. That's right. That's right. And, I, and I saw a quote uh, just the other day. Don't run off every enemy because your enemy helps you to grow. And it does. And get better. And everything that comes up against you, and then I say it like this: Every storm that you enter into, when you come out of it, you're stronger than you're you were. Stronger, when you enter. You're stronger. You're stronger. Endure it. Just go through it. You're gonna make it. You're gonna. It, it, your enemy can't kill you. You got a God on your side that's gonna keep on giving you life more abundantly. So He tells us to do several things. He tells us to love. He tells us to uh, to do good. Then He tells us to bless pray. and to pray. Then He tells us. To turn. That's right. Turn that other cheek. But now he says in verse 30, give. Not to some. Not to some, but to every man that ask it. And you know, we got a problem with giving these days. A lot of people uh, uh, feel like I got mine. Y'all need to get y'all's. And, 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 and the Bible said that we are blessed to be what? A blessing. Blessing to others. That's right. And you know what, Pastor, when I read about this giving, it's, it's really amazed me that people, and I'm talking about church folks, mm -hmm. they can give all of the money they want to on these expensive shoes, mm -hmm. 
These expensive bags, mm -hmm. these expensive hats. But when it comes to giving to God's church, they close the purse up. Oh my God. You know, uh, uh, during this pandemic, there are a lot of uh, churches who have uh, lost their incomes because of the lack of giving. There are a lot of pastors uh, that are not getting any income because of the lack of giving. God don't keep giving to us for us to keep it for ourselves, but he gives it that we would bless other people. And he tell you, whatsoever you do in secret, mm -hmm. he will reward you openly. But it says, give to every man that asketh of thee. Why are we so judgmental? All right. Why they got to ask me? Uh oh. Why? They don't look like they need it to me. Yeah. They got they, they look like they got everything they need. Uh, yeah. Why are they asking me for some money for food? They out there smoking cigarettes. <laughs> uh, why are they sitting up they. They sitting up there talking about they hungry. Why don't they go to work? Right. And why don't they go somewhere else and go? Then why don't they go? And we got it bad during the people by color. Mm-hmm. Why don't they go to their part of the town? Yeah, 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 yeah. And he said, give unto every man that ask you, that ask you and of him that taketh away thy goods, ask him not again. In other words, don't give and then try to run back and try to say, hey, I need that back. Uh -huh. You know, I had, uh, uh, matter of fact, I was with uh, 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 our, our, our Sunday school superintendent, Deacon Petty, and he, and he said, you know, he's a man of wisdom. He said to me, he said, don't ever give to a man and uh, uh, something you can't uh, yep. uh, live without. Because you ought to be able to give without expecting to receive from that person. Because guess what? Every time you do good, God is going to be the reward. And you know, Pastor, I have found out a lot of times I've had people to get stuff from me and they never give it back, but I never miss it. Mm -mm. Because if they didn't give it back, God blesses me on the other end. He'll do it another way. He'll, be, he'll come back this way. Yeah. I don't worry about it. That's right. And like I said, I, I feel like this. Like you said. I tell people, don't never give nobody nothing that you can't afford to do without. That's right. That's a good thing to have. That's a good philosophy. It is. It is. <laughs> and then don't worry about it. That's right. Don't even don't even talk about it. Yeah. If a person gets something from you, even if they say, I'm going to give it back to you, don't even worry about it if they never do it. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about it. Because God will bless you on the other hand. That's right. That's right. He's in the blessing business. I, I've been blessed because I've been able to give. You know, I don't mind giving. I don't have I don't have no problem giving. I have a heart for giving. And I can give to somebody and they don't never pay me back. Guess what? God don't leave me without. He don't leave me hungry. He don't leave me without lights. He don't leave me without whatever I need. God gives it to me. Yeah, you know, I don't see you walking around here raining. Mm -mm. <laughs> because the more, the song said, the more you give, the more, the he, more gives. he gives to you. And, and it's, it's not just with people, but even when you give to your place of worship, you know the place of worship has to be taken care of. And matter of fact, uh, I believe that it's just right that you look, uh, that you take care of the place of worship Better than you take care of your own house because guess what? If whatever you can't do at your own house, you can do it right here. There's blessings that can come, that can flow through this house. There are healings that can flow through this house. There's deliverance that can flow through this house. What better place to take care of than the house of God? And this is where your blessings come from. That's right. Don't close your hands up. Mm -mm. And you, we have a lot of people, I've heard this, and I'm pretty sure a lot of you that's listening out there have heard the same thing. I've heard people say, well, I'm not giving them, they're giving all that money to that preacher, but even if they are, what good is, what bad is about that? And you know what I thought, uh, when I heard people say that, I thought about, you know, we never say that about our doctors. <laughs> <laughs> but we never ask what the doctor is driving. We never ask what the doctor is living. We, we, we don't never say that when we go to a lawyer's office. Uh -uh. When they ask for money up front before you can even talk to them. Amen. You know, uh, 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 and, and, there, and there's a lot of people uh, 
when he says uh, give to every man that asks him, when he says give, as a lot of people making excuses even during the pandemic about why we can't give. Now, uh, you know, uh, I'm pretty sure most churches are like, well, we have made multiple ways for us to give. Mm -hmm. So we ought not have no excuse for not, for giving. not giving. But we find the excuse. But we find them. And I can always hear it. Excuses only satisfy those that make them. Mm. And I want to read this. It okay. says, can an enemy remain an enemy when they are loved? Mm. Can an enemy remain an enemy when we bless them to speak kindly about them? Okay. Can an enemy remain an enemy when we pray for them? Mm -hmm. Fortunately, no. Mm. While they may remain hostile, our loving blessing is most certainly praying will change us, even if it does not change our offender. Wow. And see, that's what's so important, Pastor. That's good, that's good. Is to be changed yourself. And when you change, when God changes you, yeah. you don't hold this, all of this malice and this hatred and uh -huh. these things that they've done to you. You don't hold it within. Mm -mm. You can let it go. I've seen it happen in my, I've seen it happen in life where one person was hating on the other, talking about the other, and they were just going back and forth. And they came to me one day and Pastor, uh, what what can I do to get this person off of me? What can I do to stop this? I said, love them. Mm -hmm. Show them love. And when you show per a person some love, long enough, guess what? They they can't do nothing uh, uh, but love you back. Because guess what? Love always uh, uh, endures. Love always trumps over hate. And it does, it says that in the end, they may prove to be an enemy to us, but we will prove to be friends to them. That's right. See, that's what's important. Yeah. Regardless of what you do to me mm -hmm. and how you talk about me and whatever you try to put me down, I'm still going to love you anyhow. That's right. That's you right. can't, one thing about it, Pastor, I can't stop you from loving me. Mm -mm. I don't care what I do to you. Uh -huh. I can't stop you from loving me. Uh -huh. Because that's come from within. That's right. That's right. It's come from the heart. That's right. And, and the it, Bible said, "Out of the heart flows what the issues." That's right. And you know, uh, they, they, you know, people talk about people arguing. Well, they can't argue by themselves. No, they can't. If you're a loving person and you show them love despite what they're saying, what they're doing to you, guess what? They can't they can't argue by themselves. They can't fight by themselves. Guess what? It's soon going to cease because guess what? They see the love that they're sh that you're showing uh, despite what they're doing. That's right. And here's another one, Pastor. We cannot enter mm. the presence of God in prayer and remain unchanged. You know what? How can you pray? <laughs> How can you get on your knees and pray for anything, amen, with a hateful heart, with a sinful mind, and not get up off of your knees different than when you got down there? I mean, you can't, it's, it's come, there's a change that comes over you. I mean, if you're praying, first of all, the Bible says you got to, you got to pray for yourself, pray for others. Pray that God change you. You got to be changed first. In the situation. And then pray for the other person in the situation. Let's change you first. Yeah, it's it starts with us. It starts here. It starts at home. Amen. And spread. Yeah, and it spreads. And yeah. then it begins to spread. Yeah. You can't spread something that you don't believe in yourself. That's right. That's right. That's right. You got to believe in it yourself. Yeah, that's right. And this is so important. And it also says, Jesus' example of imperial kingdom behavior, a countercultural, Jesus' example of behavior different from the norm. Jesus expects his followers to be countercultural. The typical normal response to hostility is, is more hostility. That's right. Mm -hmm. The desire to retribute of the minimum self-preservation. However, this is it. Jesus expects his followers to be out of this world, yeah. literally head and shoulders above the norm. Woo. See, we can't, we can't walk around here. There's a change. You become different. 
But the scripture say, I became a new creature. That's right. In Christ. In Christ. Old. Old things are passed away. Passed away. And all things become new. Brand new. And why does it become new? You begin to see. I look in my life. I see some things that happen to me now. And I used to remember how I would have acted now, way back then. Yes. How I would have retaliated mm -hmm. way back then. But thank God. Thank God. There's been a change yes. in my life. Yes. And I didn't do it. But guess what? I desired. Jesus is not going to break in. You have to want him to you come gotta in. You got to want him. You got to want him. You got to want him. You got to welcome him in. Mm. Welcome him in. And let him, and be willing. Yes. This is the main thing. Be willing to let him make a change in your life and be willing to accept the changes that he makes. And you know, you hear people saying, I don't think I can, I don't think I can do that. Well, you're not allowing God to work through you. You're not allowing God to lead you. When you say, I can't, no, you can't, but God can. I can do all things. Woo! Through Christ. <laughs> That's good. That's strengthening. That's good. I can do all things yes. through Christ. And so these are the requirements uh, that we have, amen, starting this journey with God. But then there's some rewards. Amen, there is. The next outline says kingdom rewards, Luke 6, 32 through 34. Verse 32, if you love those who love you, what credit is it that is that for you? For even sinners love those who love them. Mm -hmm. If you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. If you lend to those from whom you hope to receive, what credit is that of you? For even sinners lend to sinners to receive as much gain. Did you see there? What a difference. Yeah. What a difference. So what makes us different? It makes us different because of the way that we look at things. We don't do things looking for something in return. Mm. That's right. We don't do things looking for th something in return. God blesses us according to our need. Yeah. But he will bless us according to our giving also. That's right. If you be, he said, freely you give, freely you shall receive. And, and as a lot of people can't understand, you know, if we're walking down the street and uh, a homeless person comes and asks for money uh, and, and one person gives and the other person doesn't, the other person can't understand, why do you give to them? You know, they might not really be homeless. They might not do what they say they, they you know, going to do or whatever. Uh, but see, if you give not out of a uh, response, but if you give because you have compassion, if you give because uh, uh, you know uh, that, 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 that there's something greater going to come out of it, don't look for a return. That person might not ever pay you back. They might not ever have $5 to give you. But, but if you have enough compassion in your heart to give, that's when God rewards. And you know, sometimes you give to people that you will never see again. That's right. I know I, the experience that I had is I, I walked up to Kentucky Fried Chicken. Mm -hmm. And a man was sitting there. He had a dog, but he was in a wheelchair. Mm -hmm. And he asked me, and there was other people there. Mm -hmm. But when I got out of the car, I don't know what it was about me that he asked. Yeah. But he asked me, he said, ma'am. He said, could you buy me something to eat? And I said, what do you want? He said, it doesn't matter. I'm hungry. <laughs> he said, whatever you get me, I will appreciate it. Yeah. I said, but what do you like? Because in the Kentucky, they have the fish and the fish. Uh -huh. He said, I like fish. He said, but anything you bring me, I will accept because I'm hungry. Right. And I went in and I asked the lady, I said, do you have a fish special? So she did. And I took it back out there, gave it to them. It came with two pieces of fish, french fries, a cookie, and drink. Mm -hmm. I carried it out there, out there to him. That man was hungry. Mm -hmm. The first thing, he, he thanked me very much. Mm -hmm. But he reached off in there and got a handful of fries and put it in his mouth. All of the people that was in that place, mm -hmm. I was the one he asked. That's right. That's right. But you know, God put you in places to do what he willed you to do. Yeah. 
And you don't never know why others come before you and they don't ask. We are vehicles for him. He uses us to be a, 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 a blessing to other people. See, we don't have him with us physically, mm -hmm. but he uses us. We're his walking, talking, living creatures that he uses in order to get his work done. And he does, he does talk to you. That's right. He talks to you. But you have to be in a sudden transition. Now, you can't be busy running your mouth and thinking you're going to hear from the Lord. <laughs> God talks to you in your quiet time. That's right. You have to have some quiet time to spend with the Lord. Pick you out some quiet time. Yes. And spend some quiet time and allow the Lord to talk to you. And it's so important. This the reward, mm. you know, is so great. You know, when I give, even in church, when I give, I don't give expecting a return. Mm -mm. Because, see, uh, God has a way of blessing us beyond measure. He does. And then I give, they say give to 10%. See, a lot of people say, well, 10% of your tithe. But you're not reading the scripture right. Mm -hmm. It says 10%. He said your tithes. And, and get that and. See, some people say, well, I, I did. I gave my tithes. What about your offering? And your offering can be more than your tithes. It can be. But you got to give them both. Yes. It go together. It, give them both. Yeah. Don't, don't never say, well, this is my 10%. I've done this. That's all you've done. But what you going to do about that conjunction on the end? <laughs> and. Yeah. Offering. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, a tenth of your earnings. Uh, simply means you're giving God back uh, that what 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 already belongs to Him, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then your offering is something you just want to give freely, freely, freely. So now, if I feel like uh, uh, you know, uh, if if I loan you five dollars and you came to me and you wanted to give me two dollars and fifty cents and say, well, here I owed you that. No, you didn't owe me that. You gave that to me because you owed me $5. Mm -hmm. See, we owe God uh, that 10%, 10 uh -huh. but we give God uh, that God. offer. And see, this is what so many people don't understand. They think just the 10% is the end of it. Mm -hmm. They right. leave that end off. Yeah. They cut it off. 10% give you a tithe, but they leave that end off. Yeah. You have to look at the whole of sentences, the whole saying. Yeah. That whole paragraph, it means something. That's right. And when you are in the Lord, the Lord, I haven't always done this. Yes. Because I've always thought 10% or 10% and that was all <laughs> I was supposed to do. Yeah. But God teaches you. That's right. He opened your eyes to things that we think. Mm -hmm. When you allow God to use your little mind yeah. to think as he thinks, let him indwell in you the things that should be done, then you begin to what? See things clearly. That's right. We walk around, too many of us walk around with blindfolds on. Mm. But we need to ask God to open our eyes to his word. As we get into them, we need to open our eyes. Lord, what do you want me to see in your word today? That's right. That's right. What do you want me to get out of your word today that's mm -hmm. going to be beneficial that I may be able to carry it out and help somebody else? Yeah. yeah. See, this is where we must approach when we get into the word. Yeah. And to accept the word, feed off of it. That's right. There's not a day hardly go by that everybody don't eat something. That's right. That's right. So why not eat the word? Mmm. Yeah. Yeah. Feed on the word. Then he tells us about giving. Why you want to pat on your back? Because you love folk that love you. <laughs> what? What? You're not gonna get no special privileges. Say don't do that. <laughs> What? Why, why would you want a pat on the back because you give to somebody that you know can give back to you? That's right. And I was listening to that song today. You know that rich, he's greater than that? Mm-hmm. He's greater than He wants us to be greater than the sinners. Yes. He wants us to do better than the sinners. The sinners going to love them. They they get along together. Yeah. We the one have a problem. That's right. We have a problem. That's right. We can't get along in the church, but the people out there in the world are getting along. Yes. They're sitting up there, they're drinking at the same bottle. You can't even drink the bottle. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, we don't even want to sit next to each other. No, uh-uh. No, we don't even want to do that. But because, and then, everything they do, but God want us to be what? Different. He want us to be different. And we're supposed to be different. If you got on a, if you become a new creature, and old things are passed away, and everything else become new, then you are altogether different. That's the reason that people can look at you and say, I don't care what I do to him, he's still smiling. That's right. You know why? Because we're some peculiar people. <laughs> Raw priesthood. Raw priesthood. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're, we're different. We're cut differently. And so there are some rewards that we can experience when we do it without expecting. Expecting. That's right. And some people won't do nothing unless they do know you're going to give it back. Mm. Mm -hmm. They will not do nothing for you unless they sure you almost have to have it in writing. Yeah, that's right. That you're gonna give this back to them. If they don't, if you don't give it back to them. Don't think they won't come ask you. All right. Yeah. They come and ask you for. Do you know you owe me such and such thing? I want it. Right. That's right. I need my money. That's right. And I. But who blessed you to have it in the first place? Yeah. In the first place, realize your blessing didn't. You look. Well, I work for this. How I many people are able to work and can't? Mm -hmm. That's right. God blesses you with a job. If He blesses you with a job, then you be blessed enough that you bless somebody else. Yeah. Bless number one. Bless the house of God. That's right. That's right. Take care of the house. Take care of the house. Bless yeah. the house of God. That's right. And you will be blessed. I know they talk about the pastors and things that being there, but do you realize how blessed you are when you bless God's ministry? You you are blessed. I mean, God God it's smiles man. on that. He blesses you greater when you bless the man of God. God. I'm telling you, that woman, that that Shunammite woman, uh, made that room on her house for the preacher. Every time she said, every time he come by, he can come stay here. And God blessed her. Watch this. He blessed her with something she didn't ever have. Mm -hmm. She wanted a son. Mm -hmm. And she told the man of God. He said, what's wrong with you? I, I want a son and I ain't never had one. I don't look like I'm going to ever have one. And he went and prayed for her because she had blessed him. And guess what? She had a son. She had a son. And then he blessed her son. Blessed her son. Son died, didn't he? Yes. But guess what he did say there, didn't he? Mm -mm. Nope. <laughs> you see how God blesses you when you do and do what God asked you to do. When you take care yeah. of God's men, men or women or whatever. That's right. When you take care of the head of the house, of his house, mm -hmm. God will bless you with measures. That's right. He will... You, he will bless you, I, and I'm a living witness. That's right. Because I can see blessing that God is bestowing up on me. And I'm not saying that I pass. I may not do everything I can do, but I do what I, well, I may not do everything I want to do, but yeah. I do what I can that's do. That's right. And that's what counts. I do what I can do. That's what but, counts. And you have to do what you can do. And when you do it, you don't have to go around telling everybody what you did. No. no. It's nobody's business but you and theirs and the Lord. That's right. If anybody find out about it, they tell it. Don't you go around telling it. That's right. Yes, and, and the last outline said, what, what, what Be is merciful. Oh, yeah. So after you uh, uh, get the uh, rewards. Uh, the requirements mm -hmm. and then figure out the rewards, you ought to be merciful. And, and in this last two verses, he kind of just uh, wraps everything up in one verse. In verse 35, he says, Love your enemies, do good, and lend, expecting nothing in return. Your rewards will be great, and you will be children of the Most High, for he is kind to the ungrateful and to the wicked. You know, uh, uh, he just kind of wraps everything up he's already said in verse 35. And then he says in verse 36, Be merciful just as the Father, your Father, our Father, which art in heaven, is merciful. And that is such a wonderful thing to just be known. And I don't know how anyone else feels, but I just think I don't know. I wouldn't be where I am today mm. if it had not been for his mercy. His and mercy. His grace. Yes. His grace and his mercy. That's right. I don't know where I would be today. And we must learn. If God did it for me, mm -hmm. we got to try to help God do it for someone else. That's right. We cannot take what God done and just keep it to ourselves. 
God blesses us yeah. in order that we may be able to bless someone else. How, how much mercy have you given this week? I, I want to ask, I want, I want you to ponder on that question. Ask yourself that. Look, in your, look yourself in, the, in your own mirror and say, how much mercy has I, have I given this week? How much mercy have I given unto that coworker that I don't really care for? How much mercy have I given to that teacher that's always bothering my, my, my child? What, what kind of mercy am I giving to those that are driving and they might be a little reckless? What kind of mercy have I given to the next person? Because when you think about it, your Father which is in heaven is so merciful to you. Some of us can't even give the same mercy to somebody else. Amen. Amen. And I'm going to read this and then I'm going to leave it up to you to close it out, Pastor. It said, the last reward doled out to us is the claim of being children of God. What a wonderful feeling to be loved and claimed by God as children. Heirs to the kingdom of God. Imagine God poking at his chest watching, chest, watching us as we love unlovable people and be merciful when he, it is unwarranted. Imagine him bragging, check out my child hmm. for the reward. Mm -hmm. And you know, that, and that's so true. Think about us being parents. Yes. You know, when we see our children doing some things that we taught them, Mm -hmm. Yeah, we get a little yeah, we get a little excited, we get a little happy, and we say, Look, I know I know I taught them this. I, that that's my that's my kid, that's my child, that's my daughter, my son doing a great job. But guess what? God would do that with us. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. And this and this was so it make you smile, but just think about when you're doing God's will, he said, Look at my child. Mm. <laughs> you know. That what they make you smile. And I don't know, no, I don't know about you, but I want God to smile on me. Me too. Woo. And the song said, "God has smile on yeah, me." Yeah, that's right. That's right. He has set me free. Yes, yes, mm, yes, yes, yes. So when we remember it in today's lesson, we learn the house rules of loving and the unloving and the unlovable. But we are expected to love even when it appears to be unreturned. Uh, to bless those who curse us. We are to forgive and to give regardless of how horrible our oppressors treat us. We are never to stoop to their level of depravity. Instead, we are to be teachers, teaching them the right way to be in the world, the kingdom way, the love of God. We have something to help us, we have the abiding presence, my God, of the Spirit inside of us and the word that we read in this lesson as a key. Amen. So we ought to be able to, to you know, it's, sometimes it's not easy. We said at the beginning, it's not easy to love folk. No, some people it's hard to love because they don't want to be loved. And I feel like a lot of people, the reason it's so hard to get through them because, number one, as we said earlier, Pastor, you have to first learn how to love yourself. They don't love themselves. If you don't love yourself, then it's hard to love others. That's right. And it's even hard to get to love them because they really don't know what love is. Mm -hmm. And this scripture says, God is love. God is love. So we have to accept Christ in order to know the true meaning of love. That's right. That's right. Oh, what a wonderful lesson. Amen. And thank you, Pastor. And it's so good. Doesn't it feel good to be back? It feels good to be back. We've been uh, out for a few weeks uh, dealing with uh, quarantines and scheduling and all of that good stuff. But we're back and we're so happy to be back with you all on this week. Next week, what's our lesson for next week? Next week, our lesson is another beautiful lesson on next week. Next week, we will be coming out of the book of, still coming out of the book of Luke, meeting the needs of others. Meeting the needs of others. So this week, we've got to love them uh, that despitefully use us, bless them that curse us. And then next week, we'll talk about meeting the needs of others. We got to meet some needs. Uh, because the God that we have, he meets all needs. 
Amen. And so we're his children, and that's the business that we're in. I want to appreciate you all for joining us on tonight. Please like, share, and comment on this video. And please continue uh, to uh, subscribe to our YouTube page, on uh, our Facebook page as well. Uh, we have uh, these kind of broadcasts and these kind of programs coming to you every week that we will continue to give the word and to bless God's people uh, to, to share uh, in uh, what we're doing here at the St. Mary Church. Uh, we want to shout out to all of our members. We love you, we miss you, and we pray for you uh, that you will continually to get better and stronger uh, even during this pandemic. We want to be in prayer for Sister Sheila who uh, was in the hospital. She's out. I uh, want to pray as she prepares to go back for another testing. We want to be in prayer for her. We want to be in prayer for Sister Shirley. She's at home, and we thank God for that. Uh, we want to be in prayer for her. We want to continue to be in prayer for all of our uh, bereaved families, all of our sick and shut-in. Let's be in prayer for all of our members. Let's pray for each other. Amen. Let's be in prayer for our first family as Amen. well. Let's pray for the pastor and his family uh, as we continue uh, to do God's will. We will be back in our building physically first Sunday of November and also we're gearing up uh, to celebrate Pastor Jones and First Lady Jones here at the St. Mary Church for four years of uh, service here at the St. Mary Church. So that will be a 3.30 uh, uh, a 3 30 uh, service uh, if you would like to come if you would like to give we'll have those options available for you uh, and uh, we want to ask that you will continue to pray for us as we pray for you let us close out father god we thank you for tonight and we thank you for your word that you've given us thank you for allowing us to be uh, instruments used by you to share your thank gospel you. spread your word all over this land and country. We pray, God, that you will continue to bless our teacher, continue to bless our Sunday school, and continue to bless our worship Wednesday. Now, God, we pray for all of those that are sick. Pray for Sister Sheila and her family. We pray, God, that you would bless all of our families, all of our members. Oh, God, we pray, God, that you would bless uh, jobs. We pray that you would bless uh, 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 financial situations. We pray, God, that you would bless uh, some, some relationships, some marriages. We pray, God, that you would continue to bless us, God, only like you can. Oh, God, heal, set free, and deliver in the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. We pray for all of your people, all of those that are under the sound of my voice, until we beat again. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Amen.